Spider-Man is one of my favorite superheroes ever. And with the new movie coming out soon, I challenge myself to build one of his greatest gadgets, the web shooter, before the release of Spider-Man No Way Home. In the comics, Peter Parker creates his own web shooters and web fluid that allow him to swing around the city of New York. The web shooters are wrist-mounted devices that shoot out his signature web fluid in thin strands through a mechanical spinneret, in a similar fashion to how spiders make their webs. Instead of trying to produce my own web fluid and spinneret mechanism, I'm going to be taking a very different approach. Since I'm an electrical engineer and not a biochemical engineer, I decided to forego the web fluid and spinneret combo in favor of an electromagnet and some metal projectiles. <laughs> now, now, I know what you're thinking. Anthony, how could you possibly make a web shooter out of an electromagnet and some metal projectiles? And the answer is simple. We need to make a coil gun. A coil gun is a projectile accelerator. It uses electromagnetism to accelerate ferromagnetic projectiles to high velocities. In its simplest configuration, a coil gun is nothing more than a coil of wire and a battery. If we place our projectile near one end of the coil and connect the battery to it, current flows through the coil, generates a magnetic field, and pulls the projectile towards its center. This isn't very helpful though because the projectile comes to a full stop. If we were to cut the current flowing through the coil at just the right time, the projectile will continue through with its gain momentum. For the web shooter, we'll be using a handmade coil with a diameter large enough to allow a projectile to pass through. Since I'm making a custom coil, I can control the number of turns I use. If I increase or decrease the number of turns, that'll also increase or decrease the strength of the magnetic field. To trigger the coil with the push of a button like Peter Parker does his web shooters, we'll be using an Arduino. When we turn off the coil is very important. If we turn it off too early or too late, the projectile won't reach its maximum velocity. To power the coil directly, I'll be using a power MOSFET, some resistors, and a push button switch. The prototype circuit you see me assembling here works well for a coil made out of 28 gauge wire. But the moment I switched to a coil made out of 20 gauge wire, that's when things started to go downhill. Every time I would trigger the MOSFET, it would overheat and get stuck in the open position permanently. This would cause my power supply to shut off due to its current protection features. This led to an endless cycle of trial and error. So I turn off the safety. If I press this button, it should fire. Well, that's some Three, two, one, nothing happened. Trying again in three, two, one, two, one, nothing still. Nothing. Nothing. One eternity later. Now that we know the MOSFET works, let's try this again. In three, two, one. After spending many hours trying to debug the circuit, rebuilding it several times, and burning MOSFET after MOSFET after MOSFET, I finally came up with a circuit design that works about 90% of the time. Unfortunately, it's just not as impressive as I initially thought it would be. With the proof of concept somewhat working, it was then time to put everything together in a nice wearable package. I designed a wrist mounted holder for the coil and the projectiles. I modeled it after Spider-Man's web shooter from Spider-Man Homecoming. The coil rests in the center of the web shooter and its wires are routed to a connector that comes out of the bottom of the web shooter. The button for launching the projectile will be mounted to the palm with some elastic. The wires for the button will then be routed to the bottom of the web shooter with another connector. To make things more self-contained and portable, I'm planning on putting the electronics in a separate enclosure that will get mounted somewhere on my forearm or around my waist. There was also supposed to be a LiPo battery mounted to my waist to power the entire thing, but I couldn't get it working with the circuit. More on that later. For safety reasons, I've added a safety switch that prevents the coil from being fired when switched on. To replicate Spider-Man's web fluid, I had to get a bit creative. There's an interlocking cartridge slot on the web shooter that will hold the metal projectile and anything else needed for that particular cartridge. When the cartridge slots into the web shooter, it inserts the tip of the ferromagnetic projectile slightly into the coil, so that when the coil is triggered, it pulls the projectile through correctly. I tested two different cartridges for the web shooter. The first one is meant to replicate Peter Parker's signature webbing. It's basically a length of string attached to one end of the cartridge and another to the projectile, and then that string is wrapped around the length of the inside of the cartridge. The other cartridge houses a bigger projectile with no string. It functions more like the Spider-Man PS4 game's impact webbing. This is our city now. The bigger projectile is meant to impart a greater force when shot from the coil gun. 
With all the prototyping and design out of the way, it was then time to construct the final circuit, 3D print all the necessary parts, and assemble everything together. Here we have the fully assembled web shooter. We have our circuitry here. It's being driven by an Arduino Nano that gets powered by a nine volt battery. Then we have our MOSFET to drive the coil. We have power coming in from the 24 volt supply right here. And we have a connector for our coil. And this is the connector for the trigger. The way this works is basically when this button is pressed, if the, assuming the safety is engaged or disengaged, it'll either fire the coil or it'll prevent the coil from being fired. Just to demonstrate what it would look like, I added some indicator LEDs. So there's a red power LED that indicates the entire circuit is on, and that green LED is off, which means the circuit is not armed. So if I press this button here, that flashes three times to let you know like, hey, I'm not armed, you can't fire me. If you go ahead and switch it on, now the green LED comes on and lets you know, hey, I'm armed, be careful. When you press the trigger, it'll fire. So I go ahead and press, And then that light starts blinking slowly. What it did was it triggered the coil, it sent the correct signal to the MOSFET, and then it'll continue blinking until the cooldown period is over. I set the cooldown period to about 10 seconds, and that was with the intention of getting the MOSFET to cool down, but also letting the coil cool down in case it heats up. So I'll go ahead and turn the safety off. And for the projectiles, I wasn't able to get the projectiles firing correctly, but I had two different kinds of projectiles. These were going to be the bigger impact projectiles meant to strike something with a lot of force. And then we have these smaller projectiles. These are actually rotary bits for a rotary tool that I had. And inside this cartridge, there's this 
sort of spool in the inside with the hole in it. So you could put the projectile into the hole and then the idea is the string will be attached to this and you could just wrap it around and then slide it back in, screw it closed. And that way when this projectile flies out, it'll start unspooling all of the string as it flies along. And because this is smaller, the idea is that it would fly much further than this bigger projectile. I'm gonna show you this being shot and you'll get a sense of how it works. And I go ahead and insert the projectile again, arm it, and if I fire it, now the projectile flies out. All right, so we're back. I extended the cables for the web shooter and I'm gonna try wearing it and launch it with the lighter projectile only. So I added some elastic band here on the palm and the wrist. So I go ahead and slide my arm in and I go ahead and wrap it around my palm. So now you should be able to see in the corner if I click the button, safety's on so it doesn't fire. So I'm gonna try firing this cartridge. So I go ahead and load it. Arm the safety, let's turn the power on. Firing in three, two, one. Firing in three, two, one. All right, I'm gonna try and use my web shooter to pop that white balloon. Firing in three, two, one. Two hours later. Three, two, one. Like that. This project definitely shaved a few years off of my life. One minute, everything would be going well. Then poof, magic smoke and a broken circuit. And because of that, the end result isn't exactly what I had in mind. Even though I designed this entire thing to be very portable, I can't go anywhere with it because it needs to be connected to my bench power supply. I tried getting it working with the LiPo battery, but my circuit couldn't handle the high current that well. Firing in three, two, one. And then there's the strength of the web shooter. Since I'm not using capacitors and the voltage isn't nearly high enough, I'm not getting the projectile velocities I initially wanted. Even still, I think I did a decent job with the amount of time I had to work on this project. I learned a lot while working on this project. Like for example, make sure the MOSFETs you purchase aren't counterfeits and that they're actually rated for the amount of current you're trying to push through them. Also, a single stage coil gun isn't nearly as efficient as one that's two stages or more. With that being said, I'm already envisioning how it can improve this project in the future. By fixing the portability issues, increasing the projectile velocity, and even coming up with more interesting web cartridge variations. Leave a like if that's something you'd be interested in seeing in the future. I would love to come back to this project and do it justice. If you enjoy projects like this and would like to see more in the future, let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend and make sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for when the next video drops. Thanks for watching.